Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, May 17th, 2019. And this is our weekly video. We'll have a look back at last week's eBay auction results, share a couple of things that are going on that you might find interesting. Uh, we got a bunch of things done this week. Not as much as we want. We never do. But uh, um, uh, we've been updating the uh, eBay Today page regularly. And uh, a lot of people have asked about the Buy It Now page. It's, it's, linked, it's linked several places off the home page and on the newsletter page. You should be able to find it okay. So if you, don't, if you can't find it, let me know. All right. Uh, we also this week uploaded the sales for the May auctions happening in the last week of May 26th through the 29th in Hong Kong. And there's some great catalogs in here. And we're, we're going to be doing a video uh, next week. It'll come out early in the week on how London did. Uh, but uh, upcoming in Christie's, uh, at Christie's in Hong Kong, there's some real blockbuster pieces and great catalogs. This is one of them. And then there's this one, the Baofeng Pavilion Collection of Imperial Ceramics. Beautiful stuff. And there's also a great uh, catalog in here for uh, uh, scholars' objects called Leisurely Delights. It's uh, beautifully illustrated, and there's a lot of nice later sort of Sung and Ming and Yuan bronzes, all kinds of table objects. It's beautifully done. I think you'll like it. And uh, then there's the four masterpieces of Junware. This is a catalog. It's a one lot, uh, a one one catalog uh, for four items basically. And there, these four pieces of Junwares. They're all estimated at over a million dollars. And um, we're going to take a look at those. And uh, then there's the glories of Buddhist art auction. And one of the things that's in here that's gotten an awful lot of attention is the uh, Gumps. Uh, store Buddha. This this Buddha is big. Okay, it is uh, uh, what is it? 95 inches tall or something, and it, it was in the Gump store in California for over 50 years in the main the main lobby as you came in. It's a, a 18th century Qing Dynasty bronze. It is absolutely spectacular, and. Um, there's a big write-up in there. Uh, Bob Mowry did the write-up, and it's, it's worth checking out. It's quite a bronze, and it has an interesting history. The history of the thing is quite fabulous. So uh, check those out, and we'll be, we'll be doing something with them. Uh, we got a little behind on doing videos because we're, we're accumulating pictures for one in particular, and I really want to get done, but finding the right pictures is a little difficult at times. So we're, gonna, but we're working on it. We're working on it. Don't worry. All righty. Now, on to how things did at eBay last week. There were some really good buys on here last week. Um, I don't know what happened, but uh, some, some folks got some bargains. And this was, this was one of them. These were a pair of these uh, Thai Bengkwang ware uh, uh, jars. They were about nine inches tall. These were bigger than they look. Notice the Coke can. Um, these were nice big ones. One of them had a repaired lid. They're 19th century examples, but very attractive. And they're great on a mantle, I think. A nice size. They went for $148, okay? That was a bargain. That was an absolute bargain for this pair. Okay, that was a good thing for two of these big pots. The 19th century, but um, still beautifully done and in an, sort of an unusual pattern. Pattern in those is what you typically see. I like them. And then there was this. The uh, this was this did very well. This was a nice early piece of cloisonne, uh, beautiful quality, a uh, nice bottom on it, uh, 18th century, maybe older. Uh, good one though. Nice, no, nice heavy wiring in it. Uh, good color. There's the interior of it. Lots of age there, and uh, it brought twenty-one hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, I think this probably had a lid at one point. Judging by that rim, by the way, if you, if you look at this, um, I think this was a lidded jar, a lidded container, at one point, and I think they lost the lid, but uh, still a heck of a nice piece of cloisonne, and it did really well. It did just fine. Okay, and then on to this was that slab constructed early Kung Shi period. Uh, uh, sometimes they call these gin bottles for some reason. Um, not really, but they're just uh, big bottles. And it had a reduced mouth, okay? The neck was cut down here, as you can see, and it's been polished out. And uh, of course, the easiest way to spot this on these is if you look at the decoration, you see the decoration's been truncated because of the reduction of the height. Whenever you see that, always check to see if it's been reduced. But the coloring on this this bottle was really good. Really nice, uh, deep sapphire blue uh, cobalt was used on this. Good painting is interesting example, and it had a um, uh, the regular the the, uh, the Buddhist leaf on the bottom with the, with the ribbons, uh, but very typical foot, and uh, it did fine. It brought sixteen hundred and sixty-two dollars, even though it was reduced in height. Good, that's quite a price for that. It's a nice thing though. 
And then there was this, this uh, late 19th century uh, uh, vase. I think this went very reasonably. This was a nice one, okay? It had a good-looking foot on it, nice age to it, latter 19th century. All right, good decoration. The faces were well done. And uh, this went for $851, and I don't think that was a lot of money for this. Uh, it had a small chip on the rim, but vases in this pattern are quite unusual. So uh, I think that was a good buy. I think that was a very good buy. And I put this in. I had f forgotten to mention this last week's video, and somebody commented in the video. said, what, how the, what about the painting? And um, this was this uh, painting that uh, was up the t uh, sorting tea leaves. Uh, nice Chinese export painting done about 1800. And uh, when it first went up, we, we, I, I had commented on it that, if it, you know, it should go over $1,000. Anything under that would be a bargain. And uh, in the end, it did fine. It brought $1,594. Very good price for that. Um, not an overpayment. And pretty much in line with what the big auction houses get for them when they sell them. Sometimes they sell them by the album. And um, they per painting, this is about as good as it gets. And then on to this, this Nyonia Straits uh, covered jar from the, the seller that we've been watching over in uh, the Philippines, I mean in Malaysia. And this is a good one, nice looking, uh, nice looking foot on that, very typical of these, these very late Qing Dynasty pieces. Uh, nice enamels, brightly colored uh, for the uh, Asian market. And it brought uh, $2,849 in the end. But desirable form, uh, nice big handle on top, good color, and uh, it did fine. It did just fine. Okay, and then on to this. This was that jar I mentioned last week. We don't do a lot with uh, buy it nows, but I thought this was a particularly good deal. Um, they were asking 2000 and would accept offers, it's, uh, I, I, I remember. And uh, it, it, I put it in here just because I thought it was such a good buy, even at 2000 it was a pretty good buy. Uh, the decoration on it was really quite excellent. And uh, last week I said maybe you know, I suspect it'll be gone by tomorrow morning. Well, it was. I, I suspect one of our viewers bought it. Um, it ended up uh, selling uh, uh, for, I think, the uh, it was accepted offer. So I assume it was probably about 1800 All right. And uh, that was that. But uh, we may do more of those people. A couple of people emailed, and they liked the idea that we were doing some uh, fixed price items rather than having to wait for the auction to run out. And I'll do it as long as it's a good buy. All right, if I don't think it's a good buy, I'm not going to just do it. Okay, and then on to this, the uh, Yixing teapot with the uh, loosely drawn uh, figural landscape on it. It was a nice-looking pot, well-shaped, good color, and had this, uh, these, these branch root uh, handles and spout with a, a leaf-decorated top. Like, like a lotus leaf top on it. Looks like maybe the finial was missing off of it and that kind of thing. The base on it was not marked, okay, um, which is not unusual, but, but uh, usually they are, and the lid wasn't marked. But it was still a very nice example, and it did pretty well. It brought $393, which is a good price for an unmarked piece of Jiqing. Uh, I thought that was fine. And then under this, this very typical uh, Kangxi uh, dragon uh, with the pearl uh, vase. He's coming up out of the waves, chasing the pearl, and there's a carp before him. And then you have the, the rolling, these very stylized rolling waves around the outside. And then on the bottom of the plate, of course, is the twin fish pattern, okay, the Buddhist symbol. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $611, had no chips, restorations, or repairs. It was a good, clean-looking piece. This was uh, offered by a fellow we know over in the Netherlands who gets good things. And uh, that was a good plate. And then on to this was the carved bat stand. Uh, this was a, a seller in the UK we follow. And you notice they have these uh, swirling clouds sort of shaped like rue heads with a central bat. Very auspicious looking. Uh, nicely carved uh, a piece of wood though. Nice dark wood. And um, it ended up selling for... $473 for this stand. So I hope whoever got it has something great to put on top of it. And then over here, this fellow, another one of the Buddhas. There was a, a couple of weeks ago, this seller had an, another one of these boxwood figures. They're 19th century, I think. Uh, nicely done, though. Great detail. The other one did very well. And this one actually did a little better. The other one sold for about 900 I think, roughly. This one went, went a little over $1,000. But great quality, very, very well done, and beautiful color. The wood color was beautiful. And it sold for $1,056, which is a very nice price for that, but uh, these these really good early wood carvings are gaining uh, in, increasing interest among collectors, especially among people who collect table objects and scholars' objects. 
And uh, that was a nice one. And then on to this, the little uh, ivory snuff bottle that snuck through his, uh, his <laughs> I shouldn't say that, it is ivory. It's an ivory bottle. He sold it as lacquer, though. But, of course, anybody looking at it uh, with any, any, any amount of care would see the bottom of it and recognize right away that this is ivory. It had a chin lung mark on it. It's not a chin lung snuff bottle, but a very nice one and beautifully painted um, with uh, 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 figures or around a game table on one side and What's on the other side? Uh, oh, that's the same one, same one. Uh, oh, yeah, figures outside, uh, men outside with a table. On the other side are women. All right, but a nice-looking bottle, and uh, it did fine. It brought $415, and eBay didn't yank it for, for somebody selling ivory, but you've got to be careful with that. You don't want to get in trouble. And uh, then the Kangxi dish. Now, this Kangxi dish was not perfect. It had a repair. Uh, had I think a piece was restuck on it somewhere, as I recall. But very desirable for its quality. This type of plate is, is very nice quality, very well done. And um, it had, uh, I think, a couple of uh, hairlines in it. Yeah, here's, here's one of the pieces that was restuck uh, on it. But good-looking Kangxi dish, nice back. And if you're not in a position to spend $1,500 or $1,800, this was a pretty good uh, deal, $130, all right? And remember, you can always get these restored later. Down the road, you know, you feel like getting it done. Um, there's some very good restorers around. There's a, there's a guy here in New England who's amazing uh, in southern Maine that I know. He's absolutely incredible. And uh, he could make this look like it never never been touched. And, uh, but that was a beautiful example, nicely shaped, and, and was a great buy for somebody with a, bud, with a budget. Great thing. And then on to this, this very nice uh, circular Chinese export, late 18th century teapot with a strap handle, lots of gilding, had a ber berry, the berry finial on top up here. But the gilding was in remarkable condition. Uh, usually the gilding, especially on these lids, is long gone from use. Uh, and the handles still had their gilt on it, which is the other place they tend to wear off very quickly. And um, there it is, nicely done, good landscape, good quality. And uh, it did fine. It brought $537, which is a pretty good price. But as I said a few weeks ago, some of the Chinese export stuff seems to be getting some attention again. So we'll see if it's just a blip or is it, is it, is it a trend. All right. And then on to this, this 18th century uh, la uh, landscape punch bowl. This was a nice bowl. It was loosely drawn. I like the drawing on it. But good early old enamels on it. it had a very classic uh, 18th century foot. This foot rim that was on here, if you if you stop to take a look at it, uh, good looking bottom on that. That's not not the, not the kind of thing you see on 19th century porcelains. It's an 18th century foot, and uh, good blue enamels. These translucent blue enamels, Chin Lung period, and uh, it was a nice bowl, and it went uh, pretty reasonably. Three hundred and nineteen dollars on one bid. All right, that was a heck of a good deal. Um, this was in the newsletter, and I I, I thought somebody would grab this. But um, uh, that, was a, that was a good buy. That was a very good buy. Had a, I think it had a hairline in it or something, but I don't care. It was a nice buy, and it was a nine-inch bowl, too. All right, and then on to this. This was the pair of uh, uh, Guangxu period uh, bowls that were erroneously listed as Kangxi. Uh, I guess the seller didn't quite understand how to read the, read the characters, which, which can happen. And um, put them up as Kangxi. Of course, people right away recognize them as Guangxu, and it's a pair, and uh, they look authentic as can be to me. And uh, so did everybody else, apparently. They sold for $12,000, and uh, nice deal. And uh, uh, this was a, a seller in uh, Mobile, Alabama, uh, who we keep an eye on. He has a good eye. He just makes mistakes sometimes on his describing things. Okay. All right. And uh, then on to this, the incense burner that was from Woolworths down in Rhode Island. This was a nice old incense burner. It had a little wear, a little rubbing on the uh, edges. Uh, nice looking gunked up interior from use. Good surface patina. It hadn't been messed with. Um, of course, it had the Ming mark that they all have. And it was a late Ming or early Qing example, but beautifully done. And it brought $5,700, which is a good price for that. But I, I liked it. I liked the color, I, I a simple form, and it was a, sort of a small size, which makes it uh, pretty desirable with collectors. Nice-looking, simple thing. All right, and this was the thing I was looking at. This. Here it is. This was one of the bargains of the week. I wanted to see who, who the heck was bidding on this. Uh, this was a, uh, an 18-inch vase. 
a nice size uh, Femi June. They listed it as Nonya Straits. I don't know if it's technically Nonya Straits, but close enough. But beautiful color, vibrantly done. Uh, had a, a couple of minor nicks on the rim, as I recall. Uh, but the absolutely authentic 19th century foot rim right there, exactly how you want to see it, sort of gritty and almost looking like, like packed oatmeal. And uh, here's the uh, rim, all right? What I mean by packed oatmeal, it has that tannish color to it because the porcelain and that went into a lot of the stuff that was especially made for export was not cleaned and as refined as much as other porcelains. They even ground up old porcelains sometimes to make new ones. And they didn't wash out all the iron oxide, and you didn't end up with that nice white foot that you typically see on high-end early 19th century pieces or uh, 18th century pieces and so forth. And it has sort of a gritty texture. And uh, here's a picture of the top. A couple of chips and frits around the mouth. It's okay. And, uh, but look at this. It only went for $455. That was a great buy for a vase this size with these, with these colors. Beautifully painted and... Uh, for four hundred and fifty-five dollars, that was a, a very nice buy. I, 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 bravo to whoever got that. That was a good deal. Okay, always leave a bid. I, you know, I say it all the time, but I, <laughs> leave a bid for heaven's sakes. All righty, and let's slip over to here. Um, these are the things that are coming up that are closing uh, this weekend. One of them is this vase. This is a this is on Catawiki. Uh This is a really nice vase, beautifully done. Um, Good details of it in here. It's a 19th century pot. You can scroll through with iron red, deck, lots of iron red, and this very nice soft uh, blue ground uh, outlining everything. And I was looking at this, and this is a nice vase. It could be, uh, it, well, it's either 19th or, or, or early 19th or even late 18th century with that foot. That's a good looking, nice old foot with a little iron oxide on it, and it could well be an 18th century pot with that foot on it. And uh, right now it's up to four dollars, and it's got uh, what has it got? It's got I think like a week to go, nine days to go, or something like that. But uh, a nice example, and it is good size. It's 46 centimeters tall, so it's about 18 inches. All right. So you want to check that out. That'll be in the newsletter page this week. And then onto this, a good old Tibetan bronze, kind of grungy, just went up, but a uh, nice one. And uh, we'll see how that does. It's got one bid. It's at $223. Oh, this closes today. Well, if you see this on here tonight, buy, you might want to chase that. That's a very modest price. I don't know who this seller is. It's somebody in Canada. All right. And uh, then on to this, the Kangxi dish. This is a nice Kangxi dish, good example. Uh, it might have a couple of repairs or something on it. I can't remember exactly. Hold on a second here. Let's look at the back. No, it looks pretty good. Okay, nice Kangxi Femi Ver dish. It is up to uh, $262. It closes Tuesday, but it's good size, as I recall. This is sort of a nice size. It is uh, uh, 10 inches in diameter. It's not one of those seven inch jobs. It's good size plate, and uh, we'll see how that does. Very pretty. And then there's this, the footed uh, uh, piece. That it's listed as Tang, and it might be Tang, but it could also be Liao, Di Liao Dynasty um, uh, from, from, the, from the looks of the glaze and uh, this green enamel around the top. Uh, either way, it looks like a nice old pot to me. And a nice, I like the feet on it. It's very well done. And uh, it, right now it's up to $666. It closes on Sunday. Uh, but it's a good example. It's a nice looking piece. If you like early stoneware, that's something to think about right there. That's a, that's a nice one. All right. And then over here, this closes in a couple days. This is that really nice Kesey panel um, that's up. Beautiful quality. Uh, very Notice the, the facial expressions. The squinting eyes are smiling. And he's holding the Buddhist flaming wheel. Okay. And here are some others. But good color. But notice the facial expressions of the figures. They're all very expressive. And the details around the eyes are nicely done. And this is up to $660, and it closes on Sunday. But it's a, as I mentioned last week, that's a nice panel, and it has nice, interesting subject matter that you can spend some time interpreting if you wish. All right, and then on to this. This is something that is a fixed price thing. But it's a very nice 9-inch 18th century Qinlung Chinese export uh, porcelain bowl. And it has this very nice interior to it of these, uh, 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 you know, scale scales and then scroll patterns 
with these floral rue heads going at rue heads going around it. There's the foot on it. Very similar to the foot that we saw that ball previously, that same type of foot. Very typical 18th century foot with that creamy sort of ivory uh, tone to the paste. It's not, you can see where some of it nicked off and it's much whiter. But it turns that nice ambery color when it when it's when it's fired up, and uh, this is the the decoration. This is a good bowl. It's a nice looking bowl. It's very pretty, very pretty bowl, and uh, it's a it's a buy it now for five hundred eighty five dollars, which isn't a bad price. Um, and you might want to see if he'd be willing to take an offer. All right, but that's a that's a good bowl. I'm kind of it's one of those things where he might have been better off just auctioning it. I think he'd get very close to that number anyway. But good-looking bowl, nine and a half inches in diameter. All right, and that's about it for the week. Oh, I meant to mention uh, uh, that starting tonight, it won't be in the newsletter, but it'll be there by tomorrow morning. Uh, Josh Chamberlain uh, Juice One Four Nine Nine has a sale coming up, starting tonight, Friday. It's a ten-day sale, so it'll end a week from Monday. And uh, he's got some interesting-looking things as always, including this nice Ming Dynasty dish. Uh, beautifully done, sort of interesting the way it's done with the, with sort of floating pagodas in the water and the mountains and all that. Very nicely styled. And there's some other good things as always. So uh, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment below. I enjoy seeing the comments, hearing what people think what are thinking. And uh, for those of you who've been using the uh, the uh, eBay second opinion thing, I'm, I'm, I've gotten some nice feedback from people, and I appreciate that. And also on the uh, ID Assistant, uh, a lot of people are using that. That's amazing how many people are sending in pictures of things and, and sharing them and uh, some nice things. And uh, sign up for the newsletter at bitamount.com and get the weekly notifications and all that good stuff. All righty. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. We are working on, actually, we're working on two videos right now. We're trying to get them out. I want to get them out of here and uh, share them with everybody. But uh, we, we hit a couple of snags this week, so we got a little behind, which happens around here. <laughs> anyway, all right. Have a, have a good weekend, and I hope you find something out there this weekend that you love. All righty. Bye-bye.